In Nuke 10, we focused on what matters most to artists. We spent a lot of time on improving existing features, as well as enhancing performance and stability across the entire Nuke range. In Nuke 10, we've done a lot of work under the hood to help artists complete everyday tasks faster, whether they're using Nuke, NukeX, or Nuke Studio. We've added new functionality in key areas of Nuke and NukeX, including paint and rendering, as well as improving Nuke Studio's timeline and adding some new soft effects. We've approached Nuke 10 in a slightly different way than we have in previous years, where we've opened up the beta process to people from a much earlier stage, allowing more users to be involved and to be able to incorporate your feedback through any more iterations of beta development. So we've created a brand new vector blur node which we've improved in multiple areas. The first being on the GPU, so now you can have a much more interactive session at very speedy pace. And we've also improved the CPU aspect of it as well. So if you're rendering on the farm or just locally, things should be a lot, lot faster than before. We've also done a lot of work in improving the algorithm for the output of it. So you should have much better results coming out and less artifacts. We also have introduced presets, so you actually get into it way faster. The artist doesn't have to wait and tweak things around. He knows which render he's using, he just actually set the preset and all the basics are there already, getting a much higher quality render straight out of the box. We've done a lot of work to improve the rotor paint node, especially in areas where you have a large number of strokes, where before things would really slow down on the viewer and become hard and irritating to work with. Now what you can do is instead of having to break into separate rotor paint nodes, you have the ability to keep all the strokes in a single node, which also means that the overhead of having to connect other parts of workflow, such as tracking, etc., are no longer required in those situations. On the localization front, we've taken all the work that we put into Nuke Studio 9's localization system and combined it with the Nuke localization system, so we now have the best of both worlds. This means that you can now do localization on the background, so it's no longer locking up your UI. We're also introducing the Smart Vector toolset in NukeX and Nuke Studio. The Smart Vector toolset works with two nodes, one being a node that creates a new form of layered vectors and another node called the Vector Distort, which will use those vectors to automatically warp images or paint strokes that you've created across the sequence of frames. This is going to be a major playground for the artist. It's going to save them time, they're going to be able to just have one set of vectors and then paint anything on any part of that shot without having to retracking. I'm sure that most of the artists are going to be blown mind by it. The Ray Render node now provides us with the ability to have proper ray trace rendering in the Nuke environment, which works as an addition to the existing Scanline Render node workflow. Included in the Ray Render feature set is the ability to render high quality shadows, reflections, ambient occlusion, and also to have much higher quality spherical renders coming out of it. How many times have you gone back to your CG department asking for an extra light pass? just to add to the shot or to make it look a little bit cooler, but then you actually have hours of rendering. Well, Ray Render gives you that possibility of getting specular passes and ambient occlusions straight out of Nuke so you can do more iterations and get more into the artistic level faster and decide better looks instead of spending time on the rendering. So Nuke 10 includes a lot of great updates on the pipeline side as well. One of the key areas we focused on is the open color workflow improvements. In this area, what we've done is we've taken the existing Open Curry workflow, which was in separate nodes on readers and writers, and we've now folded these directly into the root LUT system, so that you should have less time setting up and generally be a simplified workflow overall. Color management is one of those areas that artists dread on, in general. And with the OCIO implementations we have done, it's actually make it simpler and a little bit invisible to the artist. So TDs and pipeline managers can make sure that the whole pipeline is running, their color management workflow is good, but the artists don't have to see it. As well as the open color improvements, we've also done a lot of work towards improving our consistency with the VFX 2015 platform. It's been an exciting year since the release of Nuke Studio. During the past year, Nuke Studio has continued to evolve based on feedback that we've received from artists using it in production. In Nuke 10, a lot of the improvements that we've done will help artists that are pushing the boundaries of what Nuke Studio can do by taking on larger, more complex projects or integrating Nuke Studio into their Nuke pipelines. As artists are using more and more of Nuke Studio, their projects are becoming bigger and more complex. And we know that no edit is actually locked at any given point until the last day of the job. So we have done a bunch of improvements on the timeline to make sure that all your editorial workflows 
and all your interaction timings are faster and easier for your day-to-day -day work. We've also done a lot of work to improve the stability of playback performance on the timeline, giving you confidence when working with longer form projects and short form alike. To accelerate the export process, we've also done a lot of work to improve transcoding from DPX to our native QuickTime formats, such as Apple ProRes. We have introduced new soft effects to the timeline to tackle common problems that you get on everyday shows. The first being the color correct node, which allows you, together with the grade, to do a host of coloring operations in real time on the timeline. We've now added the ability for the blink strip node to be used as a soft effect in the timeline environment as well, which means that you can create a whole subset of tools to be used in real time. We've also added a brand new chroma key soft effect to the timeline, which now allows you to do real time keying and overlay this with tracks beneath. What is more common than a green screen or a blue screen on any of our works? So being able to actually do pre-visualization of that key on the timeline is going to be invaluable. The new Chroma Key Soft Effect, which is based on this Blink Strip technology, serves as a great example of what you can do. New 10 is all about the artist's time, making sure that in their day-to-day -day work, they can dedicate more time to creative choices and less to the technicalities. So we are really excited to see what artists will do with New 10.